Okay, so I, I realized that we're going to start talking about um, circular motion, and in my book, I don't really talk about something that's really important and makes great examples, and that's gravity. Uh, sure, we kind of talk about gravity. This is what we have so far. We have, if I have, um, let's say, a one kilogram object, and then I would have, if I just drop it, let's say, then I'd have the gravitational force F, the gravity, um, mg, that's a g, where g is the gravitational field of <coughs> negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram y hat. That's all we've done so far. And this is the, technically this would be the gravitational force is the force the Earth exerts on that. And, and that's what we've done. Okay, but that's just a cheat, really. That's not the whole story. Um, <clears throat> so let, let me just describe a really cool experiment and then I'll show you the real gravitational force and then I'll show you how they're the same thing and then maybe we'll all be happy. Okay, so uh, the, there is a way to demonstrate that what is gravity, first of all? I mean, what, we can just say the following. Gravity is an interaction between objects that have the property mass. I, I think that's the best thing. You can demonstrate, you can't, it's, it's not easy. I mean, the Earth have mass, you have mass, and so you're attracted to each other. Um, there's an experiment called the Cavendish experiment. And basically it takes a, a rod with some masses on it like that and hangs it down and makes it so that these masses can rotate without being pushed by air or wind and stuff like that. And then what you do is you take uh, a large mass and put it right here, another one and put it on the back uh, behind that one and what happens is the masses are attracted and the, the rod will turn and by measuring you know there's some uh, torsional uh, force in here so the, the more it bends the greater the, the torque on that we haven't talked about torque and so but you can from that by knowing the distance between those masses and and how much it bends you can actually and knowing the masses you can determine an expression for the gravitational force so the great thing about this is you're looking at the interaction between objects and it's not using the earth. The earth pulls down on these, but since this is pulled up by the string, you're not looking at that interaction. It's, it doesn't, that's not what makes it move. Okay, so what is the real gravitational force? The magnitude, the model we find for the magnitude of the gravitational force, Fg, I'll, I'll put big G, and this is just the magnitude, is G mass 1, mass 2, over r squared. So this is the magnitude of the gravitational force. G is a universal gravitational constant. These are the products of the masses that are interacting. And r is the distance between their centers. Okay, So <clears throat> you can see how this works. I'll show you two cases. Um, G is a constant. I wrote it up here. Uh, it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons meters squared per kilogram. And, and let me show you that this is such a small thing with an, a quick example. Okay, let's say I have a book, a one kilogram book, and let's say I have uh, a, a pen that's um, 0.1 kilograms. And let's say these are uh, 50 centimeters apart, 0.5 meters from the center. Okay, so if I draw the forces on this one, I have uh, the gravitational force from the Earth, I have the uh, normal force up, and then I have this Fg. I'll call it pin, let me call it the pin on the book. Now, it doesn't, the, the book doesn't move, so clearly there should be some frictional force pushing this other way. But um, let me just, I just want to calculate the magnitude of that. If I, if I went over here, I would have the force of the book on the pin, and then I'd have, this has a gravitational force from the earth, and a force from the, the table pushing up on it also, and then friction. But I want to calculate this, the magnitude of that. It's, it's pushing it that way. Okay, so all I have to do is, is plug into this right here. So I have 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th 
times 10 to the negative 11th. I'll leave off the units just for to make it smaller. I have one kilogram, 0.1 kilogram, over the distance between them squared, 0.5 meters squared. So what does that give me? Let me put it in my calculator right here. Okay, I get two, I'll just write it as 2.7 times 10 to the negative tenth newtons. Okay, so <clears throat> this force is extremely, extremely small. The gravity is an extremely weak force. Um, how would you make this force bigger so that you can notice it? Well, I could get them closer together, or I could increase one of these masses. And so that's how we get a great gravitational force from the Earth is that one of those masses, the Earth, is very, very large. Um, you know, even if there was no friction, what would this tiny, tiny force do? It caused it to accelerate this way, but I mean, in just one second, it would take, it would increase the the speed by 2.7 times 10 to the negative tenth meters per second. I mean, that's super small. You wouldn't even be able to measure that. Okay. Okay, but that's an, another problem. So let me go ahead and compare this to the, the gravitational force from the Earth. So let me just say, okay, here's the Earth right there. Now how far apart are they? they they're essentially, if it's on the surface of the Earth, the distance to the center of the Earth, plus some small amount, but that's super small. So this is the radius of the Earth, 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. And this is the mass of the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. So let me put those values in and see what we get for the gravitational force of the Earth on the book, the magnitude. The, if I made this back to this one, if I made it a vector, I could call that x and that y, and I would just add an x hat on there. And if I wanted to make this a vector, it'd be in the negative y hat direction. Okay, so I have. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. I have mass 1 is just 1 kilogram, and the other mass is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms over the distance squared, which is going to be 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters squared. So if I put that in my calculator, Mass 1 is 1, the mass of the Earth, uh, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. Oops. Divided by 6.38 times 10 to the 6 squared. And I get 9.78. And just compare that to mg, it's going to be 1 kilogram times 9.8 newtons per kilogram is 9.8 newtons. So you see we get essentially the same value. Okay, this is a shorthand notation. As we get further and further away, as I increase the distance between this object and the Earth, this thing on the bottom unless I increase it by a lot, isn't really going to change too much. If I go, you should go ahead and do this. Add 100 meters to this, 6.38 plus 100, 6.38 times 10 to the 6 plus 100, and find the new force, and it's going to be essentially the same thing. So we make the approximation that near the surface of the Earth, the gravitational force is constant, the gravitational field is constant, and has a, a magnitude of 9.8. Now, it's not true. The further away you get from the Earth, then the less this gravitational force gets. Even in orbit, even when you get all the way up to orbit, there's still a gravitational force. Okay. Okay.